You know, uh, not talking about training, but just talking about horses in general. There's a lot's been said recently about horses not being as strong as they were, or as hardy, or um, as healthy as they were in the old days. Let's face it, in the old days, if you ever saw the training regimen of War Admiral, it's out there on the internet. He like ran in the Derby, and then he breezed four days after the Derby, and then he got on a train for two days and went to the Preakness, a rattly train on the rails, and, and then he got off the train and he breezed, and you know, horses were certainly treated differently many years ago. And I think a lot of it, people say a lot of it had to do with steroids or medications, and that may be true. But I think that what happens now is, I, and I've seen this, is that there people that raise high-priced yearlings and high-priced babies, they tend to protect them. And I, I make the same mistake as a father protecting we try to protect those that we love and sometimes you hurt those by protecting them too much and I believe that we have a kind of a hothouse effect with young horses now I had a farm upstate New York and I raised babies and those babies were made of iron we kept them out in the field they had a run-in shed We'd get four feet of snow. You'd never see a horse in the shed. They didn't come into the shed to get out of the snow. They'd be out there rolling around. There'd be three inches of ice on their coat. They'd be rolling around. And it, that all served to make them healthy. It's what the horse wanted to do. They ran around. They bucked. They kicked. They tore across the field. They fought with each other. They bit each other. They did. But they, by roughhousing, they became stronger healthier horses. By being exposed to the elements, they became healthier immune systems. But what happens is, if you breed a horse to Northern Dancer, let's say, or in this day and age, Bernardini, out of a great mare, and you know that as a yearling, that horse is going to sell for a million dollars. When when the, the clouds come, you bring the horse in the house. When it, when it gets cold, you put a blanket on it. When you when when it rains, you bring it in the house. If, the, if you think there's thunder, quick, get the horse out of the field, bring it in the stall. And not exposing them to all the elements may absolutely make some lesser racehorses. I mean, all those things that, you know, they, they, the people that rarely get sick are kindergarten teachers, first grade teachers, second grade teachers, because they got all those snotting sick, coughing kids in their room 24 hours a day and they're exposed to all that stuff and they build up an immunity and and but we hothouse expensive young horses and I think that that makes them a weaker breed and a weaker horse later on not that I'm saying you shouldn't hothouse them because if I had a million dollar yearling I'd probably just be just as guilty at, as at hothousing that yearling myself but I think in the old days, it was unheard of. Trainers went to sales and bought horses that had bumps and bruises and, and you know, field scars and things. That's just the way it was done. It was always done that way. They didn't hothouse horses in Secretariat's era or in War Admiral's era. Those horses, if you see, they were out in the field 24 hours a day and they were exposed to the elements and we had a much stronger breed. Now, because of the amount of money that we have in this game, it's with the breed has suffered a little bit, and I think it's because we pamper them so much. I don't think it's steroids, medication. I think all that stuff is wrong, also. But I think that horses are really raised to be protected, and you know, in the old days, my parents sent me out of the house at 8 o'clock in the morning, and I got back home at 6 o'clock at night. If I had a bloody nose, it was all over my shirt, but it was all dry by the time I came home. Nobody said, what happened to you today? You know, how'd you get that cut? Oh, my goodness, what's all those black and blue marks? No, I, we went out there. We played hard. We got hurt. Things happened to us, and then we all regrouped, and then we had dinner with our parents, and we went to bed. Nobody, nobody we weren't hot, hothoused. We were not hothoused. But now, I'm, as a parent, I'm like, oh my God, what happened to you? What's going on? Why, where are you? What are you doing? Where? You know, it's a whole new mentality. I think it is with horses also. Same mentality with people.